Shalom and praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing in it. We are glad in it because it is a gift to us from God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. My name is Evangelist Faith Baker. I'm the senior pastor at the Manifest Sons of God Ministry and Royal Diadems, Ladies Ministry International. And we bless God for this time, for this season. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And today I would like to share a word with you, a word of encouragement. And I know that God is going to do a great work in our lives. Hallelujah. So I want to share with you from Psalm 20. Many of us have built structures around themselves that to bring them either comfort or um, confidence in how they live their lives or something that determines who they are, that gives them descriptions. We have lived our lives in a world that has given us descriptions, and so we have our worth from how people see us, how people describe us. So you are the CEO of a certain place. You're, that becomes who you are, and it becomes your source of um, pride, your source of who you are, a source of uh, your self-esteem. It becomes your everything such that your title is who you are. And we are living in times when so many things have just been removed from the face of the earth. There are many people who just lost their jobs. So if you derived everything in terms of meaning of who you are from your job title, and now it's been ripped off from you, and you are, not, you are no longer the CEO of that company, my question is, then who are you? Where does your help come from? It could be that the reason why people treated you in a certain way had something to do with the fact that you could sponsor um, Harambe's or you could give to people when there was, th 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 there was need or you were the person who was known to you know, always come through for people because God had blessed you with a good job. Another job has gone. Then, then are, are you beginning to doubt that you will still be relevant in our world? And so I want us to take to, uh, to, uh, us to is Psalm chapter 20 and I want us to begin to see that whether we have titles that men give, whether we derive our relevance from people, I want us to see that there is God who sends us help from Zion. And I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures, and they're going to be a blessing to you. So Psalm 20 starts with something that is powerful. It says that may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. That may the Lord, my God, answer you in the day of trouble. That means that there is a day of trouble that is going to come, that every human being will get into a day that will be a day of trouble. So what we are going through right now, where people have just lost their jobs, so many people have lost their jobs, good jobs, small jobs, big jobs, six-digit salaries, five-digit salaries, all of a sudden people lost their jobs. And so you're sitting in that place and wondering, who am I? I am here to tell you that God had already foreseen the day of trouble. Glory to God. And the Bible is saying that may the Lord, the psalmist says, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. And what a beautiful time because we are in trouble. And thank God that it is not men who are going to answer us in this trouble. It is not our relations that will answer us in trouble. The Bible says, the psalmist says, may the Lord answer you, glory to God. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble, glory to Jesus. That God is the one who is going to answer us in this day of trouble. The Bible continues to say, may the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Hallelujah. At this point of loss, I've never seen people go through so much loss. Like we have seen people go through loss in this time of COVID-19. And so the Bible is saying that may the God of Jacob defend you. This is the time when we need God to defend us. And guess what? We are not going to be defended by our bank accounts and the bank balances. The Bible says that may the God of Jacob defend you. Glory to God. I want you to know that the God of Jacob is going to defend you in this day of trouble because this trouble has not chosen blacks or whites. It's not chosen Africans. It hasn't chosen Europe. It is not uh, just centered in Asia. This day of trouble has come to the whole world. But guess who's going to defend you? It is going to be the God of Jacob that is going to defend you. Now, I want you to listen to this. The Bible says in verse 2, may he send you help from his sanctuary. At a time when no one can help any other, 
Our help can only come from God's sanctuary. And so verse 2 says, may God send you help from his sanctuary. I am here to let you know that in this day of trouble, when the God of Jacob is defending us, our help can only come from heaven. It can only come from God's sanctuary. This is a good time for you to put your knees on the ground and begin to say, God of Jacob, my defender, may you send me help from Zion. Because right now, not even the banks can help you. There is no one who can help you. Only God can help us. And the help that we need is the help that is going to come from the sanctuary of God. And thank you, Jesus. Because the help that God is going to give us, there is no one who is going to remind you and say, well, you know, were it not for me, you wouldn't have been where you are. This help is not going to come when somebody tells you, by the way, you know what, you owe me. Mm -mm. This help is going to come from, come from God's sanctuary. Glory to God. And I want us to begin to shift our mindset because our mind has been so much on the things that we do. We know that if I do A, B, C, then I'm going to get a D. Or if I go to this um, a bank, they can, they, can, they can give me a loan. Or if I go to this circle, they can give me a loan. Or if I go to Mr. Someone, so they can give me some money. But a time has come that there is no one who can help you because even if they wish to, you cannot meet them. We have this thing they're calling social distancing. And and guess what? We are being told to stay in our home. So this is not the time for you to begin to start running around and asking people to help you. Thank God for this time because God had already spoken about it. And he has said that God will remember us in the day of trouble. And in this day of trouble, may our help come from Zion. Glory to Jesus. As you watch this broadcast, I want you to know that your help is coming from Zion. Like literally, it's going to come from Zion. You know, there are times when we knew... Oh, if I pray and God doesn't come through for me, I know that I can do one, two, three. Plan B's have failed. Our one, two's have failed. The only person, the only place where we can go for help is before God. And God is going to send us help from Zion. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And so truly, David says that I will lift up my eyes to the hills. And he asks himself, from where does my help come from? And he said that my help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And it is time for us to say, as David says, that I will not look at the things that are happening. If I watch news, my heart is about to get broken. If I read all the emails, all the text alerts, all the WhatsApp messages, the messenger, if I am on social media, everything that is coming through is not giving me hope that tomorrow is going to be a better day than today. But I am here to submit to you that there is a God in Zion. And as we lift up our eyes, as we stop looking at what the enemy and as we lift up our eyes, God is going to come through for us in the name of the Lord. And he is going to rescue us. Glory to Jesus. And the Bible says something. And that he will strengthen us out from Zion. Our strength is not going to come from the things that we had. If you've looked at the stock market, it has just crashed. And people have lost so much money in the stock market. So it's not in our investments. Our strength is not going to come from our investments. Our strength can only come from God. And may God strengthen you. May God strengthen me. May God strengthen the people in our time. May God send us strength in the name of Jesus. Listen to verse 3. The Bible says, may he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. I want you to know something. That this Bible, that this, uh, Bible scripture is not talking about the things we can give God now. It is the things that we gave God in the past. And that's why the psalmist is saying, may God remember our burnt sacrifices. May God remember our offerings. My God, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to know that it always pays to offer God something. To offer God your finances. To offer God your praise. To offer God your time. To offer God your worship. Because a time comes when you need to go back to that bank account of offering to God. And you need to draw from it. And you need to tell God, remember. Remember the day that I reached out to the orphans. Remember the day that I was of help to a stranger. Remember the day that I showed mercy to somebody who did not remember, deserve my mercy. Remember, God, all the visits that I made to the prisons. Father, remember the time that I have stopped doing what I was supposed to do. And I reached out to the less fortunate people in the society. And there is a time that we are going to tell God to remember our offerings and our bad sacrifices. And this is the time. And maybe you're sitting in that place and you're thinking, oh my God, I was the one person who just never gave anything. But I'm telling you something, that even in this time, 
when you offer God a praise and a worship, in a time when, when you try to, to, to praise God, you're thinking, oh, I could have used this time to tell God. Also, remember, I haven't uh, done this. I haven't done this. This is the time when we are also going to give God a praise. We're going to give God a shout. We are going to praise God as though we are being paid because we know something that that praise is going to stand before God as an offering. And for everyone who has been giving, you've been giving to the orphans, been giving, giving to the widows, you have been giving to the church. This is a time to tell God, Father, remember my offerings that I have been giving towards you. And maybe you didn't have money to give, but remember you've given your time in the service of God. This is the time for you to tell God, Father, remember. Remember, the Bible says that when God opened the book of remembrance, he remembered Cornelius. This is a time when God is going to open his book of remembrance. My brother, my sister, as God opens the book of remembrance, may he remember us now in the mighty name of the Lord. As the Lord opens up the book of remembrance, may he do us good in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 4 says something that doesn't sound right in our time. It says, may, he, may God grant us, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. This doesn't sound right because this is a time when you are telling your kids, tell me what you need, not what you want. Because this is not a time for wants, this is a time for needs. But the Bible is saying, may God give you, hallelujah, glory to God, your heart's desires. Why? Because God is not limited by our situations. God is not limited by our circumstances. God is not limited by what you have or what you do not have. God is God. And in this season, God is going to give us our heart's desires. My sister, my brother, what do you desire? What do I desire? God is just about to give us our heart's desires. And the Bible continues to say, and fulfill our purpose. There is something that God created you to do. There's something that God created me to do. And in this time when it doesn't look like it, God is going to begin to cause us to fulfill the purpose for which he created us for. He tells Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1, 5, that before you were conceived in the womb of your mother, I knew you and I called you to be a prophet to the nations. This is the time when purpose is be going to begin to get fulfilled. Why? Because this is the time, is the day of trouble. And this is the day that people will begin to see what God created them to do. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're being blessed by that word, I just want you to shout a big hallelujah wherever you are. And just thank God because God never fails. God never fails. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible says in verse 5, we will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. It is a wonderful time to be born again. That in this season, we will rejoice in our salvation. No wonder the Bible says that we are peculiar people. We rejoice when things go wrong. We shed tears when we are happy. This is the time that we will be rejoicing in our salvation. When we look at what is happening on the outside, it is so easy for us to be heartbroken. But guess what? This is the time for us to come with that word and we begin to say, Father, this is what your word says and I'm going to rejoice in my salvation. It is time for you to create a new song for the Lord and begin to worship God with a new song. Glory to Jesus. This is our time for us to rejoice in our salvation. Why should we rejoice in our salvation? The Bible says that for with joy shall we throw out from the wells of salvation. Hallelujah. If I am speaking to you, it is time for you to remind yourself that this is not a time to cry. This is a time for you to rejoice in salvation. Why? Because you are a peculiar person. I am a peculiar person. When things are going wrong, it is a time for us to begin to say that we know that our Redeemer liveth. This is the time for us to say that I know that my Redeemer liveth. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I will celebrate God. Because he lives, I know that God will fulfill everything that he created me to, to fulfill in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Bible says that in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. Hallelujah. And the Bible continues to say, may the Lord fulfill all your petitions, everything that you pray for. I decree and I declare that God will fulfill all your petitions in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions in the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says that now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the, writing, the right saving strength of his right hand. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. That I know that God will save me with his right hand. Ezekiel 5 says that God has held the right hand of 
uh, Cyrus the king. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And as God has held his right hand, God breaks the loins of kings and causes the gates to be opened before Cyrus the king. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That I know that God is going to hold you with his right hand. This time you will not drown. You will not sing. You, but you are going to float. You are going to arise. You are going to shine glory to God. The Bible says that some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and have fallen, but we have risen and stood upright in Jesus' name. Glory to God. What a wonderful God. That we know that there are people who trust in their horses and in their chariots. And the horses and chariots have fallen. But we know that we, our trust is not in anything else. But it is in the name of the Lord our God. And so we are going to pray. And I know that God is going to do us good today in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that those that trusted in chariots and horses are bound down and they have fallen. But the Bible says that we have risen and we stood and we stand upright. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I just want us to pray this day. And I know that as we pray, God is going to hear us. And as you watch this broadcast, I want you to know that Psalm 20 is true. It is such a psalm for our season. It is such a psalm for this time that we are living in. And I know that our Redeemer liveth. Amen. Glory to God. And I just want you to know that your Redeemer lives. Everlasting King in glory, we thank you because our trust is not in horses and in chariots. But our trust is in your name, O Lord, our God. And those who believed in their chariots and in their horses, they have bowed down and fallen. But because you are God, we are in strength. We are in hope. We are standing. And we're not only standing, but we are standing upright. Glory to Jesus. Father, in this day, we pray that you may remember all our offerings, that you may remember all our burnt sacrifices, that in this day of trouble, that Father, you will remember us, that as you open the book of remembrance, that God, you will not only uh, come through for us, but you will come through for our loved ones, that you will come through for our communities, that you will come through for our nations, Lord, that you will come through for mankind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that you are God. Before you, there is no God formed. After thee, there will be no other God formed. And so, Father, we put our trust in you. We put our trust in you. And we trust you to see us through this season. We trust you, God, to not just see us through this season, but to come out of this season alive and well in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we decree and we declare that we will not be depressed as it at this time in the name of Jesus Christ. That this is not the time that the enemy will bring suicidal thoughts to us in the name of the Lord. Because we will rejoice in our salvation. We will rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say that we will rejoice in the name of Jesus Christ. In this season, Lord, because we are peculiar people, we will continue to rejoice. We will continue to lift the name of the Lord our God. We will continue to raise the banner of the Lord which is the name of God in the name of Jesus Christ Father I decree and I declare that whoever is watching this broadcast Lord after the situation of coronavirus is over that they will still be alive and enjoying salvation celebrating the Lord God of Israel celebrating the God of Jacob that is their defender that God you will still remember them and that Lord you will bless them Father we give you glory and we honor you in Jesus name we pray Amen and amen. My name is Evangelist Faith Biko, and may the Lord bless you. May the Lord do you good. And if you want to know more about us, I would like you to look for our website, Manifest Sons of God Church, and you will get to learn more about us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord do you good. Shalom.